welcome to this edition of Two Soka, a two sisters of a certain age conversations with a therapist and a doctor. I'm your co-host, Dr. Sophia Grant, board certified pediatrician and board certified child abuse pediatrician. And I am your co-host, Judy Grant, licensed marriage and family therapist. So Candy, I saw you on Instagram Live the other day with Dr. Suzanne. What was that all about? Yes, well, um, you know, Suzanne, Dr. Suzanne Gilbert Glenn, she has been a guest on our show talking mm -hmm. about menopause. And um, she wanted to have me on an IG Live to talk about human trafficking because mm -hmm. um, it is human trafficking. Um, Awareness Prevention Month, and uh, by the time this is um, published, it will be uh, a different month. But um, you know, Judy and I are both wearing blue because that's a color uh, for anti-slavery, anti-trafficking. And Suzanne just had me on to talk about um, the scope of the problem, what is the problem, what is trafficking. And then um, Judy said, you know, we should have an episode, a podcast about that. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is this is kind of my area of interest and expertise. And I've been kind of shying away from it because it's kind of um, it, it. It's a downer. It's it's really kind of clinical. Um, but I you know, Judy's right, because we hear about it and we don't know what it is. So um, we decided to use this opportunity to talk about trafficking. Yeah, yeah. And, and I listened on, on Friday when uh, you and Suzanne were chatting. And, you know, you and I talk about this regularly. So the news right. that you shared was not brand new to me, but I always feel like more people need to know about this. I think more people need to know about how widespread it is because you think like human trafficking. Well, I live in a nice neighborhood. Um, my kids go to a decent school. Mm -hmm. um, you're not thinking that it can affect <coughs> you. But one thing that I know for sure is it doesn't matter what socioeconomic status you are from, what neighborhood you live in, this thing can creep in and really create so much trauma for the the child, for the parents, um, and no one is immune. No one is immune right. To this. Yeah, it it's such an insidious, evil enterprise. You know, you think about. Obviously, I'm a pediatrician, so I'm talking about kids. Um, you think about a child being forced to work, not being compensated. And then, of course, my area is sex trafficking mm -hmm. and a child who can't consent to sex. And then people are paying to have sex with a kid. Right. And um, it, it's so absolutely horrific. Um, and it breaks my heart for these kids, um, since so many of these kids who go on to be trafficked, 80% of them have a history of their own sexual abuse. Right, right. So that's essentially like priming the pump. Um, you know, I've heard kids say, I'd rather have sex with, my, with a stranger than my dad. So... If you are in a household where you're being sexually abused by your father, a stepfather, mom's boyfriend, and suppose you tell mom and she says, you're a liar, or why are you trying to steal my man? Mm -hmm. And uh, then she kicks you out, calls you a whore, and then you are out on the street. Um, these pimps know where kids hang out. Yeah. And what they will do is they will lure you in whatever it is they feel you need to hear. They'll tell you that. Oh, you want a father? Oh, just call me daddy. I'll take care. You want a boyfriend? I love you. You're so beautiful. You want fame? Oh, just do these videos and you can make a lot of money. Whatever your vulnerability is, 
they are able to talk to you, figure it out, and act like they're providing that to you. And then before you know it, you are, um, men are, are paying to rape you. And I'm not going to sugarcoat that. I'm not going to say have sex. It's rape. It, it, it's Every single time. It's rape. And it is the least, most reported form of child abuse. Because somehow they think trafficking is not sexual abuse. Because, you know, we used to call it child prostitution. Right. Remember that? She's yes, a child yes. prostitute. Uh-huh, as, if uh-huh. she, as, as if she can enter into that enterprise, you right. know? Mm-hmm. How, how can you be a child prostitute when technically you aren't of age? You know, how can right. you be arrested for prostitution when you can't consent to sex? Yeah. You know, it makes it makes no sense. And I, you're right. I mean, first of all, the term trafficking, that's kind of a new term. Because yeah. as a child, I never heard the word trafficking. So, uh-huh. And I don't know when um, that term came into play, but it's, it, I'm so glad that they changed up the, the, the vocabulary to, to, uh, to define what is happening here as opposed to child prostitute. Right, but even the term trafficking can be misleading. Because trafficking, when you say trafficking, it kind of makes you feel like you have to take one person from one place to another, you know? And right, right. Um, that sometimes happens. Frequently, it doesn't. Most of the kids who um, are lured into that mm-hmm. are found, like, within a 25-mile mi- radius of their house. Right. You know, so trafficking, you know, it's... it's transporting from one place to another can occur. But another thing that people confuse is trafficking versus smuggling. Okay. Okay. Smuggling. So the difference. Yeah. Smuggling is a crime against a country. You smuggle something in. You don't have the legal means to enter a country. Okay. Whereas trafficking is a crime against a person. Okay. So can those overlap? Yeah. You can mm-hmm. smuggle some in, someone into the United States and then you can um, traffic them. There right. is an overlap, but they are two very distinct things. Okay. Trafficking versus smuggling. Okay. So um, recently I watched the documentary on Netflix about Jeffrey Epstein. And we're talking about a man of great wealth who victimized so, so many. Uh, Like, I don't think you can count the numbers. Yeah. Um, In the United States, outside of the United States. um, And again, wealthy white male who appears to be upstanding businessmen. So Mm -hmm. you think you're in a safe environment, these young girls, and this thing goes on and on for decades and decades um, where he is trafficking minors as well as um, young women over 18. Like such an awful horrifying the vilest most disgusting piece of scum Mm -hmm. and he was insulated from that because of his wealth because of his and the thing is like when this whole i can't remember when the whole jeffrey epstein thing came out but i had known about it years before I remember I was um, speaking, you know, when I was um, living in Texas and um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm proud to say I started um, the first um, human trafficking awareness program at a children's hospital. I, that, that was me. And my goal was to educate 
all of these medical professionals to recognize when these kids came in, because if you're not taught to recognize, Mm -hmm. then um, you're going to miss them every time. So I was speaking at a conference and there was a woman, she was a professor, cannot remember her name. And she said, there is a man, his name is who is, who is trafficking. He's trafficking minors. He's rubbing elbows with presidents and politicians Mm -hmm. and famous people. And when she said it, everybody was stunned. Like this woman is insane. Like where is she getting this? And I remember um, thinking, where did she get this information? But remember, he had been convicted of some trafficking (laughs) thing years before. And then when she said people running in his circles, Bill Clinton, all these politicians, Bill Gates, it it was just kind of mind blowing. Yes, Mm -hmm. it was mind blowing. And then all of this stuff came out and I was not surprised. But to talk about the scope and to see that he was, he would lure a teenager and say, bring your friends. Yes. Bring your friends. Bring your friends. Do you have any friends? Uh Uh-huh. And um, the thing is, like, oh, you may think Jeffrey Epstein, oh, he's, he's whatever, how much money, sophisticated. All these pimps, they use the same tactics. Mm -hmm. There's nothing Mm -hmm. special about it. They right. pick out the vulnerable, the kids right. in need of money, yeah. in need of attention. And the pimps, the street pimps, just like Jeffrey Epstein, they will go and they will say, hey, bring your friends. They use the same age peer to bring people back. Right. So now you have a child confused, like scared. Yeah. Without the support that they might need or want at home and they're being said, Hey, bring your friend. So now you've got like another 14 year old girl saying to Mary and Jane, Jamie, like, come with me over to, to Jeff's house. Right. 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 And then p- paying you a finder's fee, you know? Right. And so, so, but I, you know, I bring him up cause he, you know, I just watched the documentary, but this is happening in your neighborhood. You don't have to have the Jeffrey Epstein wealth. This can be, God help us, your softball coach. This could Mm -hmm. be the pastor. And I remember years ago, you telling me about a case where a young girl was taken from her home. Oh, and like upper middle class home. Mm -hmm. Um, And they, the, the, person lured her into this, took pictures of her, then threatened her, threatened to expose the pictures to the parents and the friends and the this and the that and the other. And this person who was doing it was an upstanding member of society that you would have never, ever thought. So when this child is going to hang out or to visit with Mark, the family's like, oh, Mark, he's awesome. Of Mm -hmm. course you can do an internship with Mark. Of course you can um, go over to his house because Mark is this decent, decent guy. Well, then that comes back to my philosophy is trust no one with your kids. You know, trust no one with your kids. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. uh, Judy, Judy said lure from her house. She wasn't taken from her house. She was still living in her home. But then he used that sextortion to get her to continue to perform sex acts. Um, But, you know, um, I mentioned this in the IG live is um, you should, for your kids, create an atmosphere and environment where they know that your love is not conditional. Mm -hmm. No matter what you tell me, I don't care what problem you come to me with, we can overcome it because these kids think they can try and, figure it out, work it out, let mom or, and dad not know. And then before you know it, they're, you know, making, uh, uh, child sex, sexual, sexual abuse material. Mm -hmm. CSAM, we don't call it child pornography anymore, or they're forced to, um, uh, be raped by, by people. So, um, you know, it, it really is insidious. And, um, 
you know, one time I was talking, I was giving a lecture and this man um, raised his hand. He was a physician and he told a story of a friend he has who was also a physician. So he had a friend and uh, and it was a couple married, like father was a urologist, mom was a family um, family um, doctor and they have had one child. So the parents worked quite a bit. So the kid spent a lot of time at her best friend's house. Mm. And the best friend's father was trafficking this girl. And so you have a household with two physicians, private school, upper middle class. Mm -hmm. Would you think, is this a home where somebody's going to be trafficked? No. Although there's certain things that predispose you to becoming trafficked, like poverty, mental health issues, and kind of a lack of resources. She had none of these. She was in a two-parent home, and her best friend's father was trafficking her. Imagine. Imagine. So, so you have to have the conversations with your kids. Come oh, to yeah. me with anything. Yeah. Do not yeah. ever be afraid to share anything with me. Mm -hmm. Right. And then trust no one with your kids. Right. You know, like, I mean, that might be an exaggeration. It's a very strong term. But like, why is this grown ass person taking a special interest in my child? You know? Yeah. What like your son might be a soccer player and then the soccer coach wants to pick him up and um, practice before practice after. And you think, oh, my gosh, he's going to get a, a, a college scholarship and things mm -hmm. like that. But why would you allow someone to have unfettered access to your child? You Kenny, need to be suspicious of people who want to hang out with your kid. So that reminds me of the speaker that we heard at the Ipsacan conference in Scotland in September. Mm -hmm. A young, uh, uh, well, he's an older gentleman now talking about his history of abuse. Yeah. And in that case, he wasn't being trafficked it was the one abuser but the unfettered accessibility to this child and he was a soccer player a football yeah player. yeah and the thing is people allow that because they see maybe a potential opportunity right. well if he's with this guy he can go to college get a scholarship maybe he can be a professional like look at jerry yeah. sandusky yes Remember that POS? Yeah. You know, who was raping those boys? And he targeted, he targeted um, children of single mothers, people who didn't have money. Like if you, if you go on a trip with him, look at this opportunity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so, so just like um, a lion on the savanna stalks a herd of whatever gazelles and looks for the youngest, the weakest, the oldest. That's what these predators do. Yeah. They scope you out, you know? So, so let's, um, I want to talk about a couple of things. I, I want to talk about how they lure you mm -hmm. and the different ways that that can happen. But I also want to share that I'm so lucky to have you as my sister because you educate me. I, in mm -hmm. turn, then educate others. And okay. I share these messages with my children, um, you know, about the dangers and what to look out for and to not trust and so on and so forth. Um, but for those of us who don't have you in their lives, what should they be telling their children? What should they be doing um, to recognize when somebody is being lured, or this could be a sketchy situation? Well, I think you need to tell kids no secrets. Children do not have the ability to discern what's a good secret, like, oh, I, I bought a cookie for your mother, or, you know, they, they don't tell, they, like, they, they can't tell. Mm -hmm. So 
if they have secrets, like I have some kids who come to my office and they can keep a secret, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. So no secrets, no secrets. You need to monitor their, um, their um, presence on the internet. Absolutely. 76% of kids who are lured into trafficking are found on the internet. So no secrets, monitor, let your kids know that um, they can come to you with anything. Be suspicious of any person who wants to hang out with your kid. I don't care if it's a, a, you know, a voice coach or the 17 year old who wants to hang out with your 12 year old kid and you, oh, he just wants to play catch. 17 year olds don't want to hang out with 12 year olds. Also candy, the trafficker could be within the family. Oh yeah. That happens all the time. That happens all the time. And this kind of misconception that you are snatched and put in a, a cargo thing, you know, a shipping cargo thing. What do they call it? Shipping a container. They, shipping yeah, containers. shipping container and sent to uh, you know, the Middle East. You know, that that stuff happens in movies, but it's it's much more common to be trafficked by someone you know, yeah. whether it's a parent, yeah. a romantic partner. Or somebody in your life. Yeah. And if you think about it, these traffickers, they really don't want to work that hard. You know, like snatching some, that's risky. But, you know, smoking some weed every day, giving a kid weed to smoke, and then giving them alcohol, and then grooming them. It's Mm -hmm. a grooming process. Yeah. So it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. So, you know, it may start with, um, uh, like in the case of a family selling a kid, it may start with the kid observing adults having sex, showing the kid pornography. And then they become kind of accustomed to that sexualization, Mm -hmm. you know, and then, um, you know, you give them a little, some, some, some kids are given Benadryl you know, to loosen them up. And then, you know, you expose them and then you sell them. You exchange them for drugs. I had a case one time where a kid was being exchanged for drugs. The mother would drop the kid off in um, on a Friday and pick her up on Sunday. And she would tell her daughter to be nice to this dude. And then when the daughter would come back on Sunday, her backpack would have meth in it. So, you know, that mother ended up going to jail for 30 years and the guy ended up going to jail for 30 years. But the guy's mother would give this 12 year old child plan B on Sunday so she wouldn't get pregnant. So, so the guy, his mother, his mother would give this young child the plan B. Right. So she wouldn't get pregnant. And, um, it was the child's aunt who, um, said, what, what's going on with so-and-so? Like the, the, the aunt was like, something's not right with this. And then it came out and, um, you know, the, the child ended up moving in with the aunt, but she's 12. So while all these other 12 year olds at lunchtime are, are sitting around talking about Taylor Swift and, um, you know, um, some K-pop group and how cute they are. This 12 year old child has had sex with a grown man. She smoked meth. She's been given plan B. How much do you think she can relate? So now she's living with the aunt. Mm -hmm. So the aunt's probably going to have more rules than the mother did. So this kid is likely to run away. Because they're and not when used to the confines of like, no, just and the rules normal life. And, and then when she runs away, if she meets up with somebody who has yes. ill intent, yes, she's already primed. Yes, she is for further abuse. Yeah, she's already primed. So you mentioned something. I want to go back and look at this for a minute. Um, monitoring our children's social media. So. 
or maybe it's not even social media. Maybe they're playing a game online. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at your eyes. I know. So, so I remember I, I have a, a gaming son mm -hmm. and um, he wasn't allowed to play online. You know, like you can play, but you're playing by yourself in the safety of our home. He would not play online. Um, if he did play online, I'm like, all right, who are you playing with? Oh, this is so-and-so from school. Like, I'm like, you do not ever play with a stranger. Right. Right? You only play with those people that you know. Um, and I actually just had this conversation with him the other day. And he's, you know, he's about to be 18. And, and I was asking him, do you ever play online? And he's like, no, I usually just play by myself. If my friends are not available, I'm playing by myself. Um, and... So there's that, the gaming avenue. But then there's the Instagram, there's the Facebook, there's the Snapchat, there's the, the Twitter, all of these other things that I don't have great familiarity with personally. Um, but if your child does have social media presence, is it the account private? Is the account public? What are they allowed to post? Are you aware of their account? Like, these are real conversations that you now need to sit down with adolescents and talk about because this didn't happen for you and I, but it is very much a part of their world today. Right. But you know, the thing is, you know, you know what a Finsta is, right? No. What Finsta? Finsta, is, what, a Finsta uh, is your fake Insta. So oh you, you, you might, uh, you might, you might look at your kid's Instagram and you're, you think you're monitoring, but they have a secondary account. Oh, my God. That's with the okay. stuff. That's where the good stuff is. And maybe that Finsta is public. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, it, it's kind of um, the parenting, the level of intensity and monitoring it's yeah. not just it's not just outside of your house anymore. It's inside because those strangers are inside your house yes, via are. social media, via mm -hmm. the Internet. So it's it's a level of vigilance that a lot of people, especially people of a certain age, can't keep track of because the kids are so sophisticated. Are. So, um you know, I really don't believe that a child needs to have, um, what you call it, a smartphone at age eight, nine, 10, 11. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They need to have a phone where they can call you in case of emergency, you know? Yeah. And, and for the longest, I didn't get my kids cell phones because I'm like, okay, you might be the last person in your grade to have a cell phone. All of your friends do. So if you need to call me, you can call me. Right. Yes. You know, that, that, that's how, like, I, it's, it's like herd immunity. I'm like, you have a herd cell phone, you know? So, um, you really have to be protective and, and not be afraid to make those, um, hard decisions. You know, we, Judy and I grew up with, with parents who weren't trying to be our friends. No. You know, they would, they would, they would monitor and regulate and, you know, do all of that stuff. And Please, it's, we it's not about the house after eight o'clock on a Friday. Don't even get me started on that yeah. craziness. But, you, you know, but, and I think, um, you know, for the kids, the, the young folks that are using social media, they're totally innocent in their use. Right. And they're posting pictures of them and their friends hanging out at the mall. And it's super cute. Right. They're, they see nothing of it. But once that thing becomes public and a predator is out there and sees that group of friends and can, can identify that mall right. and sees that they go to that mall frequently. Now the predator can go to that mall and just wait right. for them but, to show up. You know, you bring up the mall. The mall is a perfect hunting ground. Mm -hmm. Any any place where you have kids, okay? Where do kids hang out? They hang out at the mall. They hang out at the movie theater amusement parks, um, where arcade. else? Arcade. Do we still have arcades? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, anywhere kids hang out is where you're going to find these predators. Mm -hmm. 
McDonald's. And the predators, mm-hmm, the predators will approach kids, a group of kids, and uh, will present the kids with a business card. You're so beautiful. You know, I'm a photographer. I'd love to take pictures of you. And um, maybe a group of five, you give out the business card. Maybe four of them are going to say, what a creep. Mm -hmm. But it's that one kid who has never been told they were beautiful or attractive or anybody express any interest in them who at 11 o'clock is going to call and see what's up. He's like, oh, my God, I remember you. Wow, I'm so glad you called. Oh, Candy, you're creeping me out right now. Well, I mean, I am an actress. (laughs) But but that I mean, when, when I tell you it's evil. Like, you have no idea how horrible it is. It, it's like the worst thing you can do to a kid is take away their innocence. You know, and these, these people use force, fraud, or coercion. Right. To get, to get them to do what they want, uh, want you to do. And the thing is, people think in order for... Um, uh, trafficking to trafficking to occur, you have to have exchange of money. No, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. if I need a place to stay and I have a, uh, an old car in my driveway, you can sleep there, but you have to do something sexual. That's trafficking. Right. You know, so I want to point out. Um, so something happened yesterday, um, and I realized I will never not worry about my children. Yeah, it's just not going to happen, regardless of their age. So yesterday, Gray and I went to the market and he asked if we could stop by CVS because he wanted to get a bag of chips. He's almost 18. He's six foot. He's an imposing kid. Right. Um, And I pulled into I pulled into the front of CVS. I'm like, all right, hop out. I'm going to park right here. And I noticed that when I parked, my back was to the door. Right. And I realized instantly I would not be able to see if someone grabbed my child and was trying to sneak them out the front of the store. So I pivot my whole body to watch the front of the store. And I am now timing to see how long he's in the store. And I say to myself, if he isn't out in a minute, I'm going in there. It's been like three minutes. And he comes out. And I said, oh, my gosh, great. I was just about to get out of the car and come looking for you. I was getting worried. I was panicked. What if somebody grabbed you? And he just thought it was amusing. And he's like, but thank you for worrying about me, mommy. Mm-hmm. But this is something that I am constantly thinking of. Yeah. And, I mean, I might be, I, I know I'm a little extra. That That's extreme. Because remember I said people want that low-hanging fruit, the easy ones. They don't want to have to work hard. With Grayson, you have to work hard. I what know. You, what you need is the kid who um, is uh, uh, home alone a lot, who wants to keep up with their friends and have the sneakers and, um, you know, feels like her parents are oppressive and... That kid who expresses a desire to be something that they're not and yeah. to, to the wrong person. And the then, you know, person. and the, the thing is, you can traffic a kid and the kid can live in your house. Yeah. You know, on 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 the IG live, I, that, like on the East Coast, I don't know if it's spread to the West Coast, but the gang members, they have a whole trafficking thing going on. And the kids are trafficked between three and six. When they get out of school and when mom comes home from work. So you sell them for a few hours and they're at home in your house. And mom's Doing like, how's, uh-huh, mm-hmm. how's school? How's school? And then you wonder, like, what's, what's going on? She's so withdrawn. She's, you know, but that could be the gang initiation. That could, you know, yeah, it, it, it's horrible. It's horrible. And the thing is, there are so many people in medicine who have not been educated on trafficking. They just don't know what they're looking at. And mm-hmm. I, years ago, I, uh, I was at a hospital and uh, somebody uh, had been working in the ED for 22 years and they were kind of helping. What are you talking about trafficking? 
And uh, this person said, yeah, it's it, I, we don't see it here. We've, we've, I, like, I've, I've been here for 22 years. I've never seen a kid who was trafficked. So I said, okay. In Jamaica, they said, go fix your business. And I, I gave my lecture. And, and this woman sat in the front row and her head was down and she kind of had her forehead in her hand. And I said, are you okay? And this woman said to me, I've missed so much. Oh. Because I told them the warning signs. I told them about the tattoos. I told them about the behaviors. I told them about, you know, if, a, 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 you know, you might work in the ED and a 15 year old kid is coming in with chlamydia for the third time in six months. You know, when I was in residency, you'd say, what the hell is wrong with her? You know, why is she sleeping around? You know, and use some pejorative term to describe her. But then you have to ask yourself, what is this child lacking? Like if they are having sex, why is this child seeking validation through that means? And then why are they exposing themselves? But you have to consider the fact that maybe this girl is being trafficked and does not have control over her own body. So that reminds me, Candy, of um, a client that I had. I was seeing the whole mm -hmm. family. Um, and mom was telling me about some challenges with the daughter mm -hmm. and how she is sneaking out at night and coming, coming in late or maybe not in her bedroom in the morning and, and the grades declining and mom is just angry. And I think there was a social worker involved in this case. And I said, this child is being trafficked. Mm -hmm. And there were some obvious things like she would return with some new clothes or yeah. a bag or whatever. And um, I think at the time she was maybe 15. Mm -hmm. And and I said, she is being trafficked. Has anybody spoken to her about it? And the social worker was like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, we need to have the conversation. And, you know, things unfolded and they had, the conversation was had. Mm -hmm. And the social worker comes back to me and was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, we need to read between the lines. Yeah, yeah. Be observant. Yeah. And even if we're wrong, okay, we're wrong. Right, you know, right. I'm if you don't consider it, you're going to miss it every single time. Yeah. But just being cognizant of the fact that this is a very, very real thing and we need to be watching right. our children. Now, tell me something. Did you clue in that she was being trafficked just because of the conversations I had had with you? I think I'm much more likely to go there because of conversations mm -hmm. I've had with okay. you. But, you know, All I right. was seeing That's... the behavior and I'm connecting the dots and I'm thinking of the things that you've said. And then it was like, you were, I, I told you about this. This yeah, is like some yeah. years ago. Yeah. But, um, but you, yeah, but I, I think that I am much more aware because I have you in my back pocket, but I also attend trainings um, yes. or conferences or events where people speak on this issue. I'll never forget this one woman that was talking about her experience being trafficked. And she traveled with a very, very popular um, pop band. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about, you know, she's 14 years old sleeping on top of a speaker while they're performing because she's been working all day. Yeah. And, how disgusting is that? And like, poor girl. And peop and she's like, how was it that nobody said, what's that 14 year old girl doing here? Yeah, people don't feel empowered to step in for kids. Um, you know, I step in for kids all the time. Remember that time we were at Chuck E. Cheese and there was this kid wandering around, no parents in sight. I was with you and we're mm -hmm. walking around Chuck. Like, why, you know, people yeah. need to, like, if you see this thing that just doesn't seem right, 
you know, it takes a village to raise the kid. Yeah. You know, you have to step in. You have to care. If the kid is not yours, you still have to care. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's just, um, God, we need to do a better job about informing children, mm -hmm. parents, teachers, school nurses, like everybody needs to be made aware of this. Yes. Everyone. And pediatricians, of course, you know, they do their, their annual, you know, wellness exam. Mm -hmm. We need to have these conversations. Exactly. Um, and I know, I imagine, Candy, I, I, that it must be really hard as a pediatrician to say to an 11 year old, you know, because it seems so crazy and far fetched, but you need to have the conversation. I don't know how you, how you get there, but it needs to be had. Um. I just want to say, most of these kids who are trafficked don't recognize that they're being trafficked. Mm. They don't because, you know, you see on TikTok, I was snatched from the Walmart parking lot. Oh, there's a $20 bill on my windshield. Somebody's, no, people don't do that. You know, that that's taking away from the real victims. So when the victims are in it, they said, well, I wasn't snatched up. I'm mm. living at home. I have. I, they, they think they don't recognize that they're in it. Yeah. You know? So, you know, you go to the airport, you see those, um, signs in the bathroom stalls and things like that. And a lot of people don't recognize that they're in it. You, you, have you been trafficked? They don't know what that is. It's like, um, are you forced to do something you don't want to do? Is someone yeah. monitoring you? Are you afraid to leave? Those are the questions you need to ask to, to uh, the victims to yeah. see. And then even if they recognize that all of this stuff is going on, they are trauma bonded to their abuser. Yes, there's that. And it's this, um, it's like with domestic violence where you don't want to leave. You know, it's bad. You don't want to leave. But like in those DV situations, you might be a grown person. Imagine a 15 year old kid, your brain isn't developed. No. And then you have the trauma that you, you took from being abused and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it, it won't be, you know, when I, when I talk about trafficking to crowds, everybody wants a feel good story. They want the story of when I saw a kid and I saved the kid and now the kid's graduating from college. And, right. and the vast majority of those stories are, are, don't have happy endings. You need to make, they have to have multiple attempts of leaving before they're finally able to do it. Yes. And, and um, I think about this kid. I saw her when she was 11. 11. She had pelvic inflammatory disease. Okay. Yeah. PID is a, a, a disease of the genitourinary system uh, typically caused by a sexually transmitted infection at 11. So, of course, um, I saw her and I knew she was trafficked and she didn't admit to being trafficked. She was dropped off at the hospital by her 26-year-old friend. So I'm, you know, screen her, ask her the questions. No, mm -mm, no, I just like having sex. So, you know, you treat the kid with kindness and all of that stuff. And, yeah. and then four years later, on her 15th birthday, she shows up at the hospital. And they tell me, um, oh, your patient from four years ago, she's here. And I talk to her and I'm like, what's going on? And she finally was able to tell me everything that had happened. And she said, I remember you when... When you saw, you know, I lied. I said, yeah, I knew you were lying. And I asked her why she came back. And she said, because you were kind to me. You were nice. Oh, stop it. And it took her four years to make that decision. But that's the thing is you have to treat these kids with kindness. Yeah. Without but judgment. She, yeah. So she finally had had enough, and on her 15th birthday, she came back to the hospital where she she was treated, but she wasn't judged. 
Yeah. It's a lot. I could talk about this for hours. Mm -hmm. I'm really a drag at cocktail parties (laughs) because, you know, um, but I think, you know, we, we brought this up because for the audience members, you guys really need to be aware. If you see something, say something, Mm -hmm. you know, if you see a 15 year old kid in your neighborhood who appears to be homeless, you know, talk to that child. What do you need? What's going on? You know, so many times we see these kids and we're like, oh God, gross, they're homeless, they're on drugs. I don't want to talk. You know, but they, they need our compassion, not our judgment. Yeah. You know, because these kids have never had, or infrequently, I mean, frequently, they have never had somebody in their corner, never had somebody um, to support them. So, so Andy, um, if somebody is listening who might be in this themselves mm-hmm. or they just want some more information or they want to share share something with, with someone they might know, what do you suggest? Is there um, an organization? Is there a, a hotline? How do people start to get help if they do? Um, well, yeah, there's the National Human Trafficking Resource Center. Um, the phone number is 888-3737-888. Um, and though that's a nonprofit organization that helps people all over the country, I've used them in placing victims. And then there's National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, wonderful organization. And um, there are so many different nonprofit organizations helping um, adults and children get out of that slavery because that's what it is it's slavery um there are multiple resources um and remember a lot of these uh, victims don't reach out because the people who are supposed to help them quite frequently are their customers right okay we've all watched to catch a predator we've all seen the emergency room doctor the rabbi the teacher the coach the college professor the cop come to have sex with kids. So they really don't trust authority, you know, kind of Mm -hmm. these people in these positions. But there are lots of organizations out there local to you. And I tell you, if you have an opportunity to volunteer to help out these kids, it's going to be one of the most rewarding things you can do. It really is. The hardest. Hardest and most rewarding. And maybe they don't say thank you. But, you know, it, it, it like, yeah, you have to do it. You have to help these kids. Yeah. Well, um, thank you um, for sharing your expertise in this area with all of us. Uh, no, it's not an easy topic, but it's one that has to be discussed. We cannot mm-hmm. ignore this. We cannot dismiss this. We need to talk about it. Um, we need to normalize it. So normalize the conversation around it (laughs) yes thank Mm -hmm. you normalize Mm -hmm. it so if someone is ready they know that you're a safe space to go to a safe person Mm -hmm. someone that they can trust uh, because these conversations are being had so i want to thank chusoka listeners for tuning in um and you know again a hard topic but essential uh, an essential one that we that we share with all of you. Please um, follow us, like us, rate us, share with family and friends. Uh, the more of you that we can um, meet with and touch and share with, the better for us in what we do. Uh, we would love to hear from all of you. And you can reach us where, Candy? Instagram, the number two, and then the words sisters of a certain age. And then um, we are available on email to Soka podcast at gmail.com. And we are also on YouTube uh, at to Soka. And then you can look for our names and find us there. Okay, wonderful. All right. Thank you to Soka family. So happy to have you with us again. We'll see you soon. Bye. No Longer Network.